I'm sharing with you some tips that I've learned over years, decades of growing celery with varying amounts of success. I find it one of the harder vegetables to grow really well. It'll grow, you can grow it, but if you want something like the celery you're probably used to buying, which is so crispy and fleshy and watery, well, you've got to give it a lot of water. That's, that's the bottom line. And I'm on a fairly heavy soil here. If you're on sandy soil, I would say you might struggle a bit. Just maybe water it every day even, just to keep that moisture level high. And it will grow really fast and repay you for that. It, it's the only vegetable I say that about. It's, it's a kind of marshland plant. So um, here we have celery, 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 celery. They're very similar in their needs, except the celery needs more moisture than the celery. The, they were both sown middle of March. That's a good time to make a first sowing, or the only sowing in case of celeriac. And then I do a couple of successive sowings through the summer into the autumn. I didn't use to back in the 1980s. Summers were shorter then, and I just did one sowing of celery and managed to make it last. You know, that is an option. But what you find as the plants get older, and we'll see in a minute, is they, they throw out more side shoots and get perhaps a little bit more stringy and not quite so fresh and crisp. So I would say at least two sowings is worth it. Do, the, do a second sowing, middle of May, say, to follow the one in the middle of March. So we're now early August, and we're seeing the results of that first sowing. Uh, the one big difference for me in success has been discovering F1 varieties. Now, generally, I'm not a great fan of F1s. <laughs> They're a bit hybrid and commercial. It's not the same as genetic modification, by the way, but it's, it's a kind of forced breeding. Uh, but it has made a huge difference and apparently all commercial celery in the UK at least is F1 varieties because you get stronger growth in this case and um, more even reliable harvest. Uh, Victoria and Hadrian, both two very good varieties. Um, but what they are prone to, what celery is prone to from this time of year onwards and as plants get older, is something called septoria. And there's just a very early and small indication of it there is where you start to see yellow blotches on leaves. As some people call it celery blight, and it's a bit like potato blight, late blight on potatoes in terms of how it looks. You get, I mean, this has dried up since because we're, we're August, but if this was October, that would go really fast and the leaves would go brown and translucent. And before long, you wouldn't have many leaves left. And then you get a discoloration of the stem as well. And most Octobers in going to November, I lose my celeriac leaves to the same disease. So not much you can do about that. It's a kind of climatic thing, but it means you get healthier leaves and stems when in the first sowing than you do on later sowings going into the autumn. And I've just brought this leaf with me actually to show a different issue. And I found this on some celeriac over there, which we haven't watered in it. The dry, in the dry weather, that's basically dry weather crispness. <laughs> uh, something you wouldn't want to see on your celery because it would mean the leaf gets very um, stringy. So that just indicates that the plant needs some water. But with celeriac at this time of year, I'm not too worried about that because they're, they're not swelling majorly at the moment. We'll start watering these in September more. So when I sow them, I sow them, the seeds are really small, sow them in seed tray tiny little seedlings, it's not practical to sow them in, into even module trays. Then we prick them out after about three weeks into little cells, one each. Again, not suitable for multi-sowing. You want a nice big um, solid stem. So I grow them one each and then transplanted after last frost normally, around the middle of May. Celery will take a bit of frost, but not too much. Um, we had fleece over this for a while just to bring it on, um, but in the middle of May, you've got to be careful of that. You don't want it to get too hot and dry, so you could manage without that. And if I now harvest some, this will show what I want to explain a bit more. For example, this one here, I'm actually, I wouldn't normally uproot it like this. <laughs> what I want to show you is how dry this soil is. It's incredible, considering how much we've been watering. You can see a lovely root system there, very vigorous. But uh, this is telling me we need to water again, basically. So if I cut that off, I want to leave that there. 
Now we've got the celery itself and this illustrates the side shoots they make. This is as they get older. So each of these is like a mini celery growing out of the side. And you can eat these. It's, um, for me, it's more of a problem. If I was selling them, nobody wants to buy sort of mini branches like that. Uh, but for one thing, they do actually make really nice stock. Classical cuisine uses a lot of celery stock. And if I trim this off now, we can see what's left, which is not bad, but starting to be a little bit of discoloration there. And I'm not was too sure what some of those marks are, but if I take the top off, if you're going to keep this for any length of time, taking the leaves off, like with any root vegetable, is good because that means the plant is transpiring less and taking less moisture out. So there we have a stick of celery and you can see it's not enormous, but it's pretty good. And here we have another one. And the difference with this one is I did a side shooting. And it is, yeah, well, I think this one, this, taking the side shoots hasn't stopped it growing, that's for sure. But you can see, basically, I did that about um, oh, three or four weeks ago. And there is one has regrown since then, that one. So if I take that one off and the leaf, and yeah, I think it, I think on the whole, it's been worthwhile. It's the first time I tried this in a kind of comparison. There is a slightly smaller one next to it. It's not to say they'll all get bigger for doing that, but they might. <laughs> anyway, it's an option. But it's, I thought I'd mention it because it's something that's, I've not really seen it mentioned anywhere. Celery side shoots. And that give you some ideas of how you can grow it perhaps a bit differently. And there we have it. Some very nice celery ready to eat.